And then I want to show you in the Zoom app real quick. You shouldn't have to deal with it the way I'm going to choose the settings, but in case for some reason you have to do any. Uh, what's the right word I'm looking for? Administrating the meeting. Oh, <laughs> sure. Sure. Uh, once you exit out of Facebook, because it just sends you back to the home page right there. Okay, so for participants, we see that there's somebody already waiting in the waiting room. Okay. Manage participants, admit the person. Now, what I can do, it'll default them to where you see our mic and our camera is live. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Theirs is off. It should, it should always be. Okay. So under the security options, you can choose to enable or disable by doing undoing the check mark the waiting room okay. which uh holds people in there until you admit them so if you take that off they'll just come in okay but their their mics will still be off coming in yes right. their default is off and they have the settings set to where they can't unmute themselves they have to be manually muted from the host okay. now the the crazy thing is is that even though they're automatically muted they're if they join by video the video is not automatically uh not visible so like a couple meetings ago someone called in and connected their uh camera and so we for like um like 10 seconds we were able to see them up there and so i just hit their just, i just muted their video section of it okay and okay killed it Okay. Their feet yeah. Well, and that's like I said, I mean, I, I'm going to be running back and forth and doing things, but there's no reason I can't come by and check. And yeah, every, if I do have to let people in, it's not a big deal. Yeah, cool. Easy peasy. Yes, sir. Hey, folks, how's it going? Doing well. And yourself? Yeehaw. All right. Hey, how are you doing? Doing well. Good. Oh, we're super excited to see that. She's uh, she'll be really good. I think so. It is. I think so. You know, we initially hoped that we were gonna. She was gonna be a little more short guy during life. Nice I think that she's still just a little too young. My sister, I think that this is over here for that. Give her that confidence to work in the summer and know be able to get her now. Yeah, she'll be great. Yeah, I think so. I'm excited for her. So glad they were here. Okay. How come you didn't get those little cables? I wish I did. Thank you, Chris. Well, no, you there? Yeah. Okay. Misty? Uh, no, uh, next week. No, 15th through the 25th. Yes, that is. Uh, has this domain registry it doesn't even have that well yeah that's ours we own that but um, yeah that's a swap station Yeah, I, and I can ask for that. 
You know, I haven't yet. I haven't got time for it. Well, my daughter and one parent a couple weeks ago. She's been out quite a bit then. Yeah. She was really. Um, she kind of took a double hit this year. Two years ago, we started uh, the Masters that we did. They do this dried chicken hut. Yep. Oh, yeah. And so we started her doing that well, three years ago now. And this would have been her last year. And she's made it to the second round of competition. And we're hoping that they extend it a little bit to let her play a bit. Yeah. Keep on keeping on. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's too bad. So what year is she? She's a freshman. freshman. She is uh, she'll be fifteen this August. So I was just talking to Kim about she uh, she actually just secured a job at the Mammoth site today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Again, is approved. And again, I remind the council if there's uh, any item tonight that we'll be voting on, that there is a conflict of interest, I would ask that you notify the entire council prior to voting. You have in your package just two sets of minutes, so one from the April 20th council meeting and one from the uh, special council meeting on April 27th. I'd ask for a motion to approve both of those uh, minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the April 20th council meeting and a motion to approve and also the uh, April 27th special council meeting on COVID-19. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. You have in your packages uh, under claims, bills in between for $99,075.03. I'd ask for a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve bills in between for the amount of $99,075.03. Second. It moved and seconded to approve those bills in between. Any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Bills in between are approved. We also have current claims for $49,915.22. I'd ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the current claims for $49,915.52. $0.22. Thank you. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve those current claims. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Those are approved. Also in your packages are Wells Fargo credit card charges for $974.41. I'd ask for a motion to approve. Make a motion to approve Wells Fargo credit card charges for $974.41. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve those uh, credit card charges. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have tonight uh, an update from our Hot Springs Area Chamber of Commerce, Olivia. We ask you to come forward. And, uh, could you put a bag over that microphone? Can do, sir. That means you have to speak louder. Yeah, I don't have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Okay. Okay, well, good evening, Mayor Cotty, esteemed council members, city personnel, and members of the community. Thank you for welcoming me here tonight to give the quarterly report from your Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce. Since 2020 started off normally, in January, I attended the Governor's Conference on Tourism. This is an excellent tourism industry event, and at that point, everyone was very excited and looking forward to a very good tourism season. During January, February, and most of March, we continued at our normal chamber pace. We were able to host our annual chamber meeting and awards dinner in March, 
before restrictions prohibited large gatherings. I'm very grateful that we were able to come together that evening with our membership to celebrate various businesses and individuals. It was our 80th anniversary, and even though Jim Hagen, Secretary of Tourism, had to cancel due to the snowstorm, and some folks felt it prudent to stay away, we still saw an attendance of around 200 people. March was when things started to get difficult, but we were fortunate that by that point, we had already placed our major marketing elements. So although travel is almost at a standstill, we will not be left behind when things do open up. Marketing-wise, we have a double-page presence in the South Dakota Vacation Guide, which is the premier publication for South Dakota. We have a full page in Traveler Magazine, and all of our Black Hills and Badlands Tourism Association elements are in place, such as a presence at the Visitor Center, online, and in the Black Hills and Badlands Visitor Magazine. We were also represented at numerous trade shows and travel shows that Black Hills and Badlands attend, and our brochure and materials were handed out at these shows. We have a full page in Black Hills Visitor Magazine, and although our 605 magazine ad contract ended in April, our last ad will run in their July issue to promote the Balloon Festival. We placed a full page ad in the Sturgis Magazine for their 80th rally. We once again collaborated with Custer, Hill City, and Keystone with Evergreen Media to produce the Southern Hills Vacation Guide, and the Fall River County Herald Star is once again working with us to create and publish the Hot Springs Welcome magazine. The Bid Board is participating with the South Dakota Department of Tourism Matching Funds campaign and put up the 40,000 match. So with SDT, we have a total campaign of $80,000. Certain elements of the campaign were suspended when COVID-19 caused shutdowns and we've been in close contact with South Dakota Tourism to adjust our campaign as needed and to change any elements where necessary. We will still get the full benefit of all our investment, even though changes were made. The bid also participates with Herman Global, who does our international marketing. But with the international travel being impacted, we switched our marketing to the domestic market and adjusted our message and timeline accordingly. The big international travel event, International Roundup, hosted by Rocky Mountain International, had to be canceled. Where it came to digital messaging, we followed the guidance of our tourism partners, Black Hills and Badlands and South Dakota Tourism. So we made sure that our message was adjusted to suit the tourism climate. Even though we had managed to place our major advertising and had a good marketing presence, by mid-March we realized we would have to be making some serious changes. Our Spring Fling Home and Garden show had to be canceled and we refunded all the booth fees. We canceled the Easter egg hunt and postponed the wine walk. We were unable to hold our job fair and our customer service training, and we had to pause some large projects as we anticipated that funding would be severely impacted. We put a hold on printing our new brochure, paused work on the new website, and did not sign a distribution contract, contract with Certified for Brochure Distribution. We also had to cut staff hours and furlough our executive assistant as well as tighten our belt severely. Fiscally, we anticipated a very hard April, May and June. We focused heavily on making sure that all relevant information was disseminated, such as regulations, as well as any programs and assistance that was being offered. I must note here that Justin did and continues to do an excellent job of keeping the channels of communication open and making sure all manner of information gets distributed. We keep everybody up to date with information from our membership as to the adjustments they have made for their businesses, especially with what our restaurants and eateries are offering. We're still answering calls for visitor information and sending out vacation guides as requested. We participate and participated in many online meetings, conference calls, including calls with Senators John Thune and Mike Rounds. We attended various web webinars to make sure we are staying current with what is going on in our industry. We continue to receive updates from South Dakota Tourism. And last week, um, some highlights worth noting are that travel spending in South Dakota declined 83% during the week of April 25th. And uh, these statistics are from Kirk Holstein at South Dakota Tourism. 
Um, South Dakota occupancy for the month of March declined by 34.2%. The most dramatic year to date declines in occupancy have been in the Northeastern region. 36% of locals stated they would be unhappy to see advertisements promoting their destination. And the far majority of travelers, 60 to 75%, feel activities with crowds, such as attending conferences, sporting events, uh, attending performances or attractions are still unsafe. According to South Dakota Tourism, this information was provided by Tourism Economics, Destination analyst, Analysts, and STR. If anyone is interested in receiving these emails, you can sign up at Travel South Dakota or get hold of us and we can send you the link or the email. Just let us know what you prefer. Although things seem bleak now, we are confident that when travel starts up again, our area will be particularly attractive due to lack of crowds and our wide open spaces. And although we believe May will be a difficult month, there are talk of some entities opening up for the Memorial Day weekend. We do not have any concrete information on this just yet, but we'll keep the city appraised of what's going on. We do not plan to open the Depot Information Center in May. We have to look at what the safety and traffic situation is in June before we open. At this point, we think, we hope that July will be normal and we're confident that the Fall River Hot Air Balloon Festival should still be able to go ahead as planned in August. For the month of May, we will continue to have our chamber meetings in the form of conference calls rather than face-to-face. -face. This is an unprecedented situation, but even during this difficult time, we are still working to promote our members and our community. We will continue to adjust as necessary and keep the flow of information going. We are taking precautions, but trying to stay positive, and we look forward to when we can once again open up our businesses, get everyone back to work, and welcome visitors to our wonderful town. Please let us try to support our local businesses in any way we can. They are vital to our economy and tourism. I believe we do have to stay positive and supportive of one another, while at the same time taking precautions to be safe, but I do believe we will get through this. Please feel free to contact the Chamber at any time for information or sign up for Spring Tides, our weekly digital newsletter that contains the latest of information available to us. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to update you from the Chamber. Thank you, Olivia. Uh, one thing, uh, if you could uh, continue to provide that travel data, I think that helps us uh, look and maybe estimate the you know, the budget uh, information uh, for the future. So thank um, you. Could I just send it to Misty and then you'll... Yep, you, she shared this with me already and we can sign up to get the email. Yeah, so great. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from the council? Again, thank you, Olivia. I know this, these are some real trying times. Really appreciate the work you're doing and... Uh, uh, let's just keep in contact if there's anything we can work together on to thank you, get, get things sure. open and, and it's thank safely, you to uh, city for helping us with justin that's uh, very very grateful for that thank you yes thank you okay are there any communications from the public Able to get it out of the box is the first problem. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Councilman, employees, city employees. My name is Randy Myers. I'm the current uh, president of the Hot Springs uh, Area Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> I've got a little, a uh, couple of comments here. Uh, first off, uh, on behalf of the Board of Directors, uh, we would like to go on record in support of the transfer agreement uh, to, the, to facilitate the suspension uh, sidewalk to that project. Uh, it's our belief that the sidewalk is absolutely needed for the pedestrian safety and maintaining the width of sidewalks in front of our businesses. 
It will also be a unique feature that will enhance the downtown area. This will be a one-time chance to take advantage of this opportunity, and we ask that the city does not, not miss it. From a personal standpoint, I was able to attend a few of the early on DOT meetings, and it's always been the same problem. There's only so much distance between the front of the buildings and the river. So with that limited space, you know, what what gives? The, the lanes have to be the, the correct width for the traffic. So does parking give? Does sidewalks give? Uh, you know, park uh, sidewalk widths? I mean, there's just only so much space. So I guess it's my personal belief that this suspended sidewalk is the answer. That gives us additional width uh, to accommodate uh, the parking and the sidewalks uh, without restricting them down. So uh, I think that's probably was the best compromise that, that could uh, uh, be arranged uh, given the limited space that's there. Uh, and of course, you know, like the DOT said, you know, once this highway is built, uh, we're going to end up living with it the way it's the way it's constructed for quite some time. So uh, our concern uh, is that it's done correctly and to the benefit of, of Hot Springs. Uh, you know, it's uh, quite a project, if even the aesthetics of it. You know, I don't know that I've been born and raised in South Dakota. I don't ever remember seeing another town that's got a suspended sidewalk. I think along the river and the river walk there, uh, that alone uh, would be a unique feature to the town. I've seen people countless times standing in front of the waterfall, waterfall getting their picture taken and things, and this uh, sidewalk would just be another one of those unique features along there that would help the businesses, would help tourism, and uh, be a, a unique feature of downtown for, for many years to come. So uh, I guess on behalf of myself and the chamber, we would uh, appreciate your uh, consideration in, in uh, voting to, uh, to enact the, that transfer agreement and go forward with that suspension bridge. Uh, any questions? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate Thank you, Randy. It. Are there any other communications from the public? Hi, I'm Joan Howard from um, president of the Southern Hills Economic Development Corporation. And we would just like to add to the chamber's uh, statement, uh, Shedco in general supports City projects intended to promote business downtown, which of course is what this is about, trying to save our lovely downtown. An attractive downtown is why most people say they like to move here. They drive through and say, this is the prettiest little town, and it looks busy and it looks happening downtown. Uh, there will be a significant harm to the business for a short time during this construction. I think you guys are more aware of that than anyone. So it'd be really nice, I think, to have a light at the end of the tunnel for businesses there and potential businesses that the future will actually be better than now once we undergo all the pain of this area. So we just want to go on record as saying we believe this is supportive of the business environment, and that's what Chad Co is supportive of. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I think you highlighted one thing. Uh, it's important that during that construction that the chamber, Shedco, and the city all work together to let the public and community know that Hot Springs is open for business. Are there any other communications from the public? Hi, I am Mike Carruthers, One Canyon View Circle, also co-owner of the Morris Grand Gallery. Uh, I too am in favor of accepting the state funded 2.8 million for the cantilevered walkway. In my opinion, without doing the cantilever project, the state highway 
project will create an unworkable sidewalk width on top of a dangerous narrowing of the road. It will also pass up the ability to put the town on a path of prosperity upon completion of the project through increased private investment and added sales tax revenue to the city. Without rejuvenation of the downtown driven by the cantilevered sidewalk, I'm afraid the area will continue to deteriorate, including lack of rebuilding from the fire damage potentially. I think in general, the above points are widely accepted as, as important and compelling. So why is there any controversy around taking the free money for the beneficial project? There are a number of negative opinions that have been shared, but most revolve around the issue of future maintenance costs. Those costs can come from the cantilevered sidewalk itself and from taking over the maintenance and trade with the state for the upper portion of University Avenue. Relative to the sidewalk, I believe the maintenance will be necessary for either the cantilevered sidewalk or the regular sidewalk that will need to be put in if the cantilevered project doesn't go through. So I think that issue is a wash or close enough and similar either way. Possibly more controversial is the future cost of maintenance of Upper University Avenue. I understand the city staff believes that the cost of maintaining university will be small enough to cover under the future budgets without undue burden. I believe this position because Upper University is currently in reasonably good shape, has a low traffic volume and low speed, so normal wear and tear should be minimal. A key point that I haven't heard others describe is the potential future benefit of the city being able to control the destiny of University Avenue which is one of, the only, uh, one of the only several entry points to the city. What I mean by this is the ability in the future to beautify the street. For example, what if this section of university were only two lanes rather than four, had a significant green space in the median or sides of the road? That would completely change the first impression people would have upon entering hot springs from the west. <clears throat> I'm not saying that this vision for university is the best way to beautify hot springs, or that it should be done soon. The point is that as long as the state controls the street as a highway, projects for University Avenue to the benefit of the city will be difficult, not impossible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Are there any other communications from the public? And we'll move on in our agenda to personnel actions. I'd accept the motion to approve personnel actions A through D. I'd make a motion to accept personnel action items A through D. Second. It moved and seconded to approve those personnel actions. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? I have a question, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Does Mayor Airport maintenance operator, is that the person that we're training to take over that stuff? Well, that, uh, that position hasn't been officially advertised, but he would be a uh, one that, that he would be a very good candidate. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Those actions are approved. We move on to committee of Reports, administrative and finance with Bob and Caitlin. The next item in finance meeting will be uh, May 11th, 1 o'clock uh, at the Miller Center and also available via Zoom. Airport Advisory Committee, Bill. Airport Advisory Committee met on Thursday, April 30th at 8 a.m. at the airport. President were Mayor Cotty, Ed Jensen, John Gregory, myself, Tracy Bastion, Scott Sohe, Members of the committee were Don Connor, uh, Ivan Venner, uh, John Nash, John O'Connell, Shane Miller, and Georgia Holmes under new business. First item of business was airport advisory committee membership. Uh, Georgia Holmes resigned and we appreciate her past service. Uh, Ivan Venner uh, introduced himself and he was uh, voted unanimously uh, to be accepted as a new member. 
Um, summer health was discussed and uh, Ivan Benner will start May 5th and be working Tuesdays and Thursdays from eight to five. The June 6th fly-in was discussed and it was voted to cancel that event due to the COVID-19 issues and uncertainties. It informed the group that the uh, uh, Hayground bid had been awarded to Steve Shimani. Uh, the committee reviewed the farm ground bids and recommended accepting both the North Pasture bid as submitted by Gary and Sharon Romy and the South Pasture bid as submitted by Fall River Feedlot. Uh, the application has been submitted uh, for the FAA CARE Act. Uh, this will be for the $30,000 that can be used for operating expenses. Ed had contacted Andy Peak with the FAA who stated that we can use those funds for the purchase of the QT pod card reader replacement since this is an operating expense and not a capital improvement. As of April 27th, fuel sales for the month were 866.63 gallons, and we had had 63 flight operations. In other business, the gate access code will be changed and then revised on a routine basis, and all appropriate emergency response organizations will be notified of that code change. Uh, we discussed the next steps to be taken to proceed with the 10 unit T hangers. Um, KLJ Engineering will be invited to the next admin finance meeting to discuss the design and construction steps along with cost and funding sources. The reason this was brought up is the normally we would be responsible, the city would be responsible for 10% of the design costs that has been waived so we can get the T hangers designed for no out-of-pocket dollars for the city and so uh, we need to understand if we get that done this year then what are our requirements uh, uh, what would be the city's requirements going forward uh, for the 10 percent of the construction costs for those hangers and uh, so i'm uh, we need klj to tell us specifically what we have available to do that. So that's why uh, we'd like them to sit in on the next admin finance meeting. Uh, we also uh, had a discussion on what it would take to be able to sell Jet A at the airport. Uh, Jet A is the fuel that uh, turboprop planes as well as uh, most of the helicopters and uh, jet aircraft use. Um, the, the fire plane, uh, that's the fuel the fire plane uses, as well as the medevac aircraft. Um, this could be a significant uh, uh, way to promote our, not only our airport, but our city. Uh, it's, it's certainly a, an opportunity, so we're going to take a look at uh, what, what we might need to be able to do that. Our meeting adjourned at 9.30 and our next meeting will be May, Thursday, May 28th, 8 a.m. at the airport. Thank you, Bill. Crestor Fall River Regional Waste Management District, Ron. Uh, nothing to report, I don't know when we'll have a meeting. Downtown Historic Preservation Commission, Craig. We have a meeting Wednesday night, the 6th, 5 o'clock, in the New River Center. Evans Plunge Advisory Committee, Allison. Our next Evans Plunge Advisory Committee will take place on May 14th at noon at the Plunge. Um, a group of us did get together to discuss um, the steps to take for Evans Plunge. Uh, Chris, Tom, John, Joshua, um, and myself were there. Bill Lukens was on there for a short time because we had a question for him. Uh, the group looked at safety, economic, and staffing challenges facing reopening. It was determined that it was going to be very difficult to open the plunge following CDC guidelines, and we set a target date for May 25th. This time also reflects many of the Black Hills attractions um, that Olivia had mentioned that are also looking at Memorial Day as a, as a point of a target to open up. Um, Chris and I are in constant communication commi communication, assessing 
each day any new information that would change projections. And I appreciate everyone who has contacted me to let uh, me know how much the plunge it means to them and how much they want us to open. It's good to hear the value that the plunge brings to our community. Um, we want to open as well, and we're working towards um, that goal to do it safely and efficiently. And we went through some of the things that the workers are doing, and I wanted the public to know that. Tom is currently working on complete seal replacements on our hot tub filters, filter canisters, finishing tower electrical, doing some repairs in the ladies' locker room, building plexiglass partitions for the front desk for when we're open, that there will be a, a barrier there for our workers. Um, he's doing some repositioning of equipment and general maintenance. He will also be doing weed spraying, finish outdoor pool readiness, and helping John um, at the Mueller Center with the geothermal grid if passed. Um, I'm, he's, and then he's also working on the hot tub tiling estimate. Um, if you recall, the Evans Plunge Advisory Committee for the last two years has been working on a hot tub uh, goal. Uh, to have a good estimate to this group uh, or to the next council so they know what those projections would be for um, new hot tubs. Joshua has some final finish work on the slides. So hopefully you all saw those pictures of him um, redoing that whole slide area. So while um, the, the closure is not what we were hoping for, uh, a lot of those projects that have been pushed out for years uh, to, to address in the two weeks closures is happening right now. Um, he's been finishing priming, painting the lower sections of the outside slide tower, heavy cleaning of the indoor pool decks, helping ready the outdoor pool for patrons. And we also uh, need benches outside for front door refit, refreshed with paint. So he will be doing that. He will be meeting with the current lifeguards during the week of May 18th for the through the 22nd for IST new safety measure instructions, swimming readiness testing, and getting slide dispatchers ready on board if we are going to have the slides running this summer. Um, we will also have to look at hiring more LGs and training them if we intend for both pools to be open. And so they are working together to figure out those staffing needs. Um, and like I said, our plunge meeting is on the 14th. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me and we can make sure that we address those at our meeting. Hey, thank you, Allison. Parks, Recreation, Beautification, and Cultural Development, Dave? Hey. Our next parks meeting will be uh, this Wednesday at 1 o'clock here at the Mueller. Please attend if you're interested. Thanks. Planning and Zoning Commission, Allison? Next Planning and Zoning Commission will be May 20th, 7 p.m. Uh, I believe it's going to be here at the Mueller Center. Okay. Thank you. Public Safety, Bill? Next public safety will be Wednesday, May 20th, 1 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Public Works. Public Works May on April 28th. Uh, Mayor Cotty was present. Craig, Dave, uh, John, Tracy Bastion, Scott Sogi, uh, Billy Morrow, Bart Sig, and myself. Uh, we had a couple new business items. Uh, the Hidden Lake Campground and Resort uh, asked the city to extend their lowered sewer bill uh, through May due to the coronavirus impact. Uh, and Public Works is recommending the reduction in the sewer bill for Hidden uh, Lake Campground and Resort be extended through May uh, due to the coronavirus. We also talked a little bit about the um, uh, water uh, meter reading equipment. Uh, the committee discussed looking at upgrading or replacing some aging water meter readers. Uh, current readers are beginning to show their age and should be replaced as funds allow. Old business items. Uh, the committee discussed a request by a resident to approve a credit to their water bill and to refund the water meter test fee after reviewing the resident's water bill from December 2018 through February 2020. The committee agreed an adjustment to the water bill was appropriate. The committee recommends a credit of $36.74 be applied to the user's account and the $20 meter test fee be refunded. It is on the agenda tonight, so if you have any questions uh, before you vote, I'll be happy to provide more details for that. We uh, discussed the armory property. property. Uh, we've been looking at the possibility of selling or auctioning, auctioning the armory property. Uh, I met with Don Olstead from the Planning and Zoning Commission about what, what language should be in an RFP uh, and asked them to begin working on a draft. Um, we also talked about mobile food truck parking at Evans Plunge. 
uh, Craig, Dave, John, and myself met to discuss expanding the public space across from Evans Plunge for use by mobile truck vendors. Uh, some items that were discussed uh, were um, the vendor season. Uh, we talked about April through October. Uh, looks like there'd be enough space for three to four vendors. Support vehicles, support vehicles would be required to park off-site. Uh, we discussed a monthly rate uh, of $100 that would include electricity, uh, portable toilet. There would only be one toilet for the whole facility, uh, the, the whole area, not one toilet per vendor. Uh, city trash service and water. Um, did I mention that rate would be $100 a month? Yes. We also discussed a, a weekly rate of $25, uh, and it would include the same utilities. Some requirements uh, that we talked about for the mobile vendors themselves, that they would need a city park reservation permit, uh, city of Hot Springs mobile food vendor license application, uh, that is $250 for the first year, $100 uh, yearly renewal. Some of the next steps we need to uh, look at are determining the best location for the toilet. Uh, to make it easy for the uh, provider to come in and set it and clean it and remove it if necessary. And then that would determine the uh, remaining locations available for the, uh, the food trucks or the vending trucks. Uh, after location, the toilet is decided. Um, we need to determine the locations for electricity and water and get quotes for the installation uh, of those utilities. Uh, and discussions about expanding the public space will continue. The Main Street bump outs, John sent a list of the bump outs uh, approved by the council uh, to DOT so they know which ones we want to have filled with dirt. Uh, Jennings Bridge opening, the state accepted the low bid by Dietzel Engineering for replacement of the Jennings Bridge. Am I saying that correctly, John? Yeah. Uh, we discussed Golden West fiber optic repair work uh, from the uh, project that was uh, going on last summer and last fall. Uh, the contractor for Golden uh, West Fiber Optic Project did some repair work on the alley that runs through the El Rancho Trailer Park. Uh, there's a Zoom meeting tomorrow to, conti to continue talking with the contractor about additional punch list items that uh, still need corrected. Uh, we had a request from a resident on Sulphur Springs uh, to do a little extra maintenance there. Uh, the city had already provided some gravel uh, and cleaned up the road that uh, the resident felt that uh, more was needed. Uh, Dave, Craig, and I took a look at that uh, and agreed the street is in good condition and doesn't need any additional work at this time. Uh, but while looking at the street, an area along the flood wall uh, that is showing some erosion was identified. Uh, city staff will need to look at that area and correct as necessary. The uh, Garden Street route uh, that we talked about a little bit um, for the volunteer fire department, work is in progress on that uh, to widen the curb across from the bridge side for fire truck access during the Highway 385 reconstruction project. Did I miss anything? Uh, no, you didn't miss nothing, but was the weekly rate for the mobile vendor, was that 25 or 40? 40. 40? I thought it was 40. All right, thank you. Uh, the next meeting will be, where will it be? Yeah. Lost my place here. Sorry. Somebody have a uh, hand? May 12th. May 12th, 1 p.m., Mueller Center. And I'll also be available on Zoom. Okay, thank you, Bob. Southern Hills Economic Development, Caitlin. Our next meeting is scheduled for July 17th, um, time and place to determine. Thank you. Southern Hills Golf Course Advisory Committee, just a couple of things to report. Uh, uh, talking with uh, the committee doing the Father's Day golf tournament, and uh, there may be uh, a desire to change that depending on the COVID-19. Uh, uh, so we're looking maybe at delaying that until August, but that will uh, depend on uh, uh, what the committee decides and uh, and how uh, how our situation in Hot Springs progresses in, in that area. Also, I've got a, uh, a note from uh, Jason today that there was some damage done on uh, number 11 Green by a golf cart that was. Uh, 
playing, supposedly playing, uh, playing uh, golf. And um, obviously that's something that uh, particularly this year with the limited funds we have to maintain, we don't want to spend a lot of extra money repairing damage to people that are using the course. So I would encourage anyone that's out there that sees any of that, uh, that kind of thing going on to report that to uh, the clubhouse or to Jason and uh, those individuals will be uh, dealt with accordingly. Volunteer Fire Department, Ron. Next meeting is the 12th of May, 7 p.m. at the House Bank Volunteer Fire Department. Okay, thank you. We move on in our agenda this evening to ordinances. Uh, we do have in your packages uh, Ordinance 1213, I'd ask for a motion to approve the first reading of this ordinance uh, dealing with the find and bond schedule. I'll make a motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 1213, an ordinance providing for the amendments and revision of the find and bond schedule for the City of Hot Springs, South Dakota, ordinance violations. Second. Been moved and seconded uh, to approve this uh, first reading. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask Misty if you'd call the roll, please. Dave Burris? Yes. Ray Epstein? Yes. Bill Lucan? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Ron Richards? Yes. Allison Ritterbush? Yes. Craig Roaming? Yes. Caitlin Turner? Yes. Thank you. Okay, we move on to new business, and the first item is item A, uh, talking about the uh, joint powers agreement between the city of Hot Springs and the Department of Transportation to transfer Highway 18 for $2.8 million. I would ask Misty to uh, read the motion. We did get some uh, additional verbiage from the DOT attorney uh, late Friday afternoon that uh, she wanted to ensure was in that, uh, uh, in, that, uh, in that motion. So Misty, if you would read the, mo read the motion we're looking for a motion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign on behalf of the city the joint powers agreement between the South Dakota DOT and the city of Hot Springs for transfer of Highway 18 segment in exchange for 2.8 million to be used for the construction of a suspended sidewalk along North River Street. Council has reviewed the locations of the right of way and approves the transfer and agreement with the specific legal descriptions to be inserted into the agreement without further need for review or approval by the council. That needs to be the whole motion. Yeah, somebody can just say so moved if you agree with that. <laughs> if you want to talk about any of the details, you're welcome to do that too. So moved. Okay, it has been so moved. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved in and seconded. Uh, you do have a package in your uh, or information in your packages concerning life cycle cost. You do have some uh, details and pictures of those uh, pieces of property that the city would inherit as a result of that transfer. Uh, is there any further discussion? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, um, I want to start with John, uh, just for some clarification. Uh, to to the mayor, thank you for um, putting in the uh, the language to uh, uniquely identify where the city's responsibilities begin and the city's responsibilities end. Uh, I appreciate you doing that. Thank you. Uh, so, John, there's there's been a lot of discussion. Uh, about the the cost for University Avenue uh, that the city would incur uh, if we approve this this transfer, and the uh, the, the concern uh, comes from an email uh, that was provided um, from a uh, DOT uh, individual to a, a private citizen in Hot Springs, uh, and in that email. It talks about through the analysis, the cost throughout the 25 years was between 1.5 and 2.2 million dollars. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with that email that that I'm referring to. Yeah. 
Yes, I have. Uh, and then you provided your 25 year life, life cycle cost estimate for University Avenue. So before we get into the details of that, um, what's your experience with road construction? How long have you been doing this? I've been in the road construction business into the world since 1986. Dealing with these kinds of, of projects? With roads, bridges, uh, design, reconstruction, widening, uh, numerous other bridge projects also. Okay, thank you. And I ask that question because, again, um, the state has uh, said that uh, the cost is going to be between $1.5 million and $2.2 million for, uh, throughout 25 years. And John's provided the council um, with a different assessment uh, of what he sees those costs being. Uh, they're certainly not anywhere near the, the $1.5 to $2.2 million. So, John, if you would uh, kind of expand on uh, why do you feel your costs uh, are so significantly different from the states? I'd appreciate that. I'd be glad to. I have the state life cycle cost estimated worksheet in front of me. Um, their worksheet consisted of big replacement projects. We had minor joint ball repair on both segments, and that is bridge segments. We had a polymer chip seal on a structure. We also have another polymer chip seal on structure. This is all bridge related. Uh, you have a remove and replace all of the concrete that makes up University Boulevard. And that's to occur in 12 years. We are reducing traffic loading. We will not be replacing any concrete roadway during the life of this project. Uh, it also includes minor joint repair I've included pricing for the minor joint repair, crack sealing is what that's called. I also include a cost estimate for replacing some concrete panels if we have to during our future ownership of this roadway. Uh, I want to point out that the DOT had an existing contract to do uh, joint spall and crack repairs, which they will be beginning on Friday. They have marked all the sections of panels that were cracked anywhere on University Boulevard, particularly right there on the west side of the Garden Street Bridge. Those panels will be replaced. They will also do a ceiling project of all the cracks from the traffic light to the other side of Baumgard. So those costs, I predicted the cost that we would have to do another crack ceiling project in the year 2030 also another crack ceiling project in the year 2040 and then likely remove and replace maybe five uh, concrete panels um, by the year 2030 and that all depends on you know, if we get any more satellite around utility structures that seems to be the only place that roadway shows any sign of wear the timing on that road is still evident after all these years, because the first segment from the traffic light to 16th Street was built in 1982. The section from 16th Street to the bypass was built in 1995, and the roadway is still in excellent condition. Uh, lastly, on the life cycle cost presented by the DOT, you have maintenance. Maintenance is what we're agreeing to do. I want to point out on the annual maintenance cost for 25 year life cycle, uh, the DOT's estimate was $113,690. That is the figure they present for pavement repairs, winter maintenance, pavement marking, signing, right of way maintenance, mowing, structures, and drainage. Uh, currently, the city is already doing winter maintenance and snow removal right-of-way maintenance, mowing, and utility and drainage structures. So we're already doing a portion of that that they've already presented. So I calculated the additional cost of standard pavement maintenance, pavement marking, and signing over the next 25 years. Uh, Tracy Bastion, our public works engineer, worked with me on these numbers, roughly $2,550 per year additional cost. You're looking at over the lifespan of the 25 years, the additional maintenance cost uh, 
as stipulated by the DOT, annual maintenance costs to us would be $87,481. That's using a 2.5% inflation rate per year as recommended by the DOT. We are currently in the next 25 years spending $153,336 on what we're already doing out there on University Boulevard that's already factored into our budgets. And now I'm going to take questions. Is it accurate to say then that the, um, the bulk of the 1.5 million and uh, between 1.5 million and $2.2 million the state uh, was talking about um, is in the section, uh, will stay in the section uh, that the state uh, will continue to have responsibility for? That is correct. It will be associated with the bridges and we will not be replacing the concrete pavement that's already there. Okay. I do have other questions for, for John, but if you folks have questions re directly related to what he just shared. Okay. Um, on the um, chart that ISG provided uh, on April 1st uh, that gives the engineer's opinion of probable cost, uh, they talk about a contingency. Uh, and my concern with, with the cost of the project is that it not uh, exceed the estimate because of what I've always come to know as change orders. Uh, and when you and I talked today, change orders are also contingency. That's where those dollars would be covered. Um, and it's your feeling that the $160,000 contingency that they're talking about is uh, normal and consistent with what you've seen before. Is that correct? That's correct. That covers the unknowns that they will have during uh, the construction. Okay. Uh, and the last thing for me, uh, we had talked um, at the, the last council meeting when we approved the uh, transfer agreement <clears throat> uh, with amended language. We talked about a not to exceed clause uh, and you've talked about um, that type of language, that protection isn't in this transfer section, but it would be addressed in the actual construction document. Is that correct? That is correct. That is in the agreement too, that is construction related uh, terminology. Okay, so on the two items that the council um, approved to uh, uh, for the, the sidewalk, uh, the uniquely identifying where the city's responsibility begins and ends, uh, and language to uh, keep the costs as low as possible, both of those are going to be addressed. Just a different documents. Thank you. John, in all likely probability and if during this project, the cost overruns will be most likely coming from the utilities on the areas that we don't know of, is that correct? In our discussion with the DOT last week, uh, we talked about the segment that will be called the state and city project that includes our suspended sidewalk and they decided during the conversation that we would include the city utilities portion of that work within that project segment, which is Jennings Bridge and then Atata. Uh, utilities portion of this project will be the most likely place for cost overruns because of the major unknowns of what utility is going to each one of those buildings and when they were put in. Because with every building gets a new sewer line and a new water line uh, service. Because you're not going to be able to dig up the sidewalk a second time and fix those things. We'll have several unknowns as we go through there, depending on how those structures were originally built. Thank you. Thank you it's John. important to note also on the utilities project, we do have over a half a million dollar grant that has been approved for that. That is correct. On sewer, the hookups to the buildings, is that up to the owners? Like they do, like say a new sewer to my house. The sewer. I'm, I'm liable from the main to my house. The owner of the building would be responsible for the sewer from the edge of their foundation into their building. 
but a new line has to be installed by the city to the edge of their building because it will be under a brand new sidewalk. Is there any other discussion? Bob, you said Public Works um, had discussed this as far as the maintenance on university and that they didn't feel like there would be more work or uh, that it was a sustainable amount of work that they could um, easily take on without having to add uh, more to their uh, staff load or anything. Um, that will certainly need to be looked at, but as, as far as a significant amount, uh, the city will certainly need to focus on uh, crack ceiling and uh, making sure that uh, it doesn't deteriorate and it, you know, it stays in good condition so we don't uh, you know, see any uh, significant costs down the road uh, beyond the, the standard maintenance. As far as additional staff, we didn't discuss that. Uh, we'll just need to see how that works out. And, I think it's important to point out too, as John did, uh, starting by the end of this week, there'll be small repairs. The upper sections will have some uh, sections replaced and uh, there'll be some crack seal work that will be done throughout that whole university. And that's part of the ongoing project that, uh, that the state has. So we will be accepting a uh, university avenue that is in outstanding condition. And concrete pavements and urban locations do, care, do turn to tend to wear well. The dip bridge was built in 1952. And if you look at that condition of that pavement uh, surrounding that, you see that uh, that's a kind of uh, condition that can survive in an urban environment. Allison, to your question, some of the maintenance that we're going to be doing once this project is done to the crack ceiling these are things that we have to keep up and through our past we've been a little negligent on that on some of the old sidewalks and curb and gutters so um, the machinery we have already in excellent shape it'll just be a matter of stepping up our maintenance as far as the new street and sidewalk goes so that's be something that we're going to have to do in any other questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, I would ask Misty if you would call the roll, please. David Burrett? Yes. Ray Eckerty? No. Bill Lucan? Yes. Bob Nelson? Yes. Ron Richards? Yes. Allison Ritterbush? Yes. Craig Romey? No. Caitlin Turner. Yes. Thank you. Motion is approved. Moving on in new business, uh, we have a possible motion and discussion to acknowledge the low bid received uh, for the uh, lost here structure replacement of the uh, bid uh, from Heatsler Construction. For, for the, uh, and we have to concur with the South Dakota Department of Transportation approval on that bid. So what we're doing is moving to acknowledge that low bid and, uh, and also to uh, give our approval. I'd accept the motion to uh, acknowledge that low bid. Make a motion to acknowledge the low bid received for the Jennings Avenue Structure Replacement Project DRO 8024-0018-1, PCN 06-VF from Dyksler Construction for $1,389,998.19. Concurrent with the South Dakota Department of Transportation approval. Second. Then moved and seconded to uh, uh, approve that. Uh, did uh, are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is a motion discussion to uh, discuss uh, awarding the livestock grazing storage lease bids uh, for the airport. 
I would ask for a motion to approve those uh, lease bids. I'll make a motion to award the livestock grazing, storing, feeding lease bids of the Hot Springs Municipal Airport. Area A North Pasture awarded to the sole bidders, Gary and Sharon Romy, for the purpose of grazing cattle for a five year term, $1,000 per year. And Area B South Pasture awarded to the sole bidder, Fall River Feedlot, for the purpose of storing and grazing cattle for a five year term with no rent for first year in exchange for replacing the east boundary fence and planting grass and farming the ground. The next four years, the rent shall be $5,000 annually. Formal agreements to be drafted. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve those uh, leases. Uh, Bill Holt was the recommendation of the airport advisory. Uh, the recommendation is to accept those bids. Okay. Any uh, further discussion, comments, questions? Mr. Mayor, I'll be abstaining from this. Okay. I assume that's because of your last name. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The uh, next item is to uh, have a motion discussion to look at and sign the uh, U.S. Department of Interior Geological Survey funding agreement for water resources. Uh, at a fixed cost agreement. This is uh, an agreement that we've had in the past. And uh, I'd ask for a motion to make, uh, to approve that. I make a motion to authorize the mayor to sign the U.S. Department of the Interior U.S. Geological Survey Funding Agreement for Water Resource Investigations, fixed cost agreement number 20NTJFASB0009. Second. Been moved and seconded to uh, make this uh, approve this uh, expenditure to, uh, to to look at that uh, particular resource. I was a little bit uh, dismayed that the city has to contribute to spending something that the Department of Interior and U.S. Geological Survey has a lot more money than we do in our budget. And I discussed that with Tracy, and they, there is a value to keeping that, uh, documenting the, uh, the amount of water that's flowing down the river. We have, this is our uh, gauge that uh, does uh, ac accomplish that. And so I think it's important that we continue to monitor that in the event that there should be uh, any significant uh, issues that come up with flooding and or drop in water. Uh, we do have that that documented. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We also have a uh, before you uh, requested tax abatement uh, as submitted by the Fall River uh, Director of Equalization for a uh, Betty J. Hunter, and uh, I accept the motion to uh, approve that uh, tax abatement. I make a motion to approve the requested tax abatements as presented and submitted by the County of Fall River Director of Equalization, Hunter, uh, $174.89. Second. Then moved and seconded to make that abatement. Caitlin, do you have some uh, information just to provide the council what we're voting on? Um, it is an individual who qualifies for a tax reduction program. Um, South Dakota codified law does um, allow that if they miss the deadline, they can um, ask for an abatement. So that's what you're approving the request for the past. Okay. And, and so I'll be abstaining. Okay, and, and you will be abstaining. Any questions? Looks like a fairly routine abatement. Uh, I would ask all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have a possible motion and discussion to authorize the airport manager to uh, purchase the QT pod. Again, that uh, money will come out of the uh, COVID-19 relief uh, fund, the CARES Act for airports. And uh, 
So it gives us an opportunity to approve this once more. I'd accept the motion to uh, make that purchase of the uh, Q service terminal upgrade. I'll make a motion to authorize the airport manager to purchase the QT pod model 4000 self serve fuel lead terminal. Funds to purchase and install the terminal will come from HSA FAA CARES Act funding and are estimated at 14,815 broken out as follows 13,295 cost of terminal after trade in, including shipping of $575, estimated installation $900 and then $945 first year service plan. Future supplemental appropriation will follow. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve that purchase. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Also, have item G a motion to discuss and approve the refund of $20 paid for a water meter test and uh, the 3674 uh, for a water bill on 1740 Lincoln Avenue? You have a summary of that uh, in your packages. I'd accept the motion to make uh, that refund. I move the motion to approve a refund of twenty dollars paid for a water meter test and approve a credit of thirty six seventy four to the water bill for seventeen forty Lincoln Avenue account number zero one six zero two eight five zero zero one zero four three. Second. Then moved and seconded to uh, approve make uh, approve that uh, refund. Are there any questions, comments, or discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then the last item is a possible motion to approve the Hot Springs High School graduation parade to be held on uh, May 16th. And uh, John, do you have any information on, uh, I neglected or I missed the, either one, that what the parade route is? Around this is like COVID, it's very fluid. We don't have any official confirmation, but this is this is what was suggested. The parade will start at the high school at West on University Avenue. Uh, I went in 20th Street, head north to Washington Avenue, turn east on the 17th Street, north to Minicott Avenue, turn east on 385 to Lens to Toad Mark, where the parade will end. And that's typically the route they take when they do the homecoming parade. So we're waiting for confirmation if that would be the route. Okay. And, uh, and I, I hope it's understood too that if conditions change significantly and the council needs to um, further uh, act as a result, if we do have uh, a uh, community spread situation that uh, would require a more stringent uh, uh, manner to uh, protect the community this would uh, with this would also affect this approval tonight any other questions or comments again i think this is a great i mean this is a, a tough year for seniors uh, they're not missing out on a lot of uh, different activities and uh, and maybe this parade can be some kind of measure of them getting the recognition that they deserve for uh, graduating from high school. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Did we have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get the record uh, to the record time. I'm sorry. Greg, read the motion if you would please. Sir. Make a motion to approve the Hot Springs High School graduation parade to be held on May 16th. Second. second. Okay, now it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Hearing that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries.
Okay, uh, moving on, we've got our finance officer report. Misty? Mayor, to undertake completing the budget time, I apologize. It's not about payroll wording. You're not going over that whole thing, are you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your April end of month monthly finance reports will be presented at the next meeting. I'm taking my time during this meeting to go over the 2019 annual report for the city with you and then some highlights of that report and I'll just briefly cover some of the other documents that I included this year for your review along with your annual report. Uh, this annual report in the format that you see that lists all our governmental funds and our proprietary funds will be published in the newspaper in full. Um, the separation of the funds includes governmental funds. They're accounted for and reported for differently than our enterprise funds, since governments, unlike businesses, do not provide services as a means to an end or for profit, but rather as an end in and of themselves. So some of the services included in our governmental funds um, that we pay for include legislative expenses, financial administration, police, fire, protective inspection, highways and streets, sanitation, which includes our street cleaning, the airport, our cemeteries. This year, new to the annual report is transit broke out, uh, health, which includes our animal control officer, recreation, parks, libraries, also new this year broken out is economic development and assistance, debt service and capital outlay. The revenue that pays for these services provided by the city that aren't necessarily established to earn a profit, but provide services in our community that cities are expected to provide include property taxes, general sales and use taxes, licenses and permits, grants, which come from a variety of sources, um, the library does earn revenue, there are fines that are paid, but the majority of the revenue uh, in our governmental funds does come from taxes, whether that be property taxes or general sales and use tax. I'm going to kind of round these numbers a little bit, but they are in detail in the highlights that I provided to you down to the penny. Property taxes collected in 2019 $1,119,000. This was $10,300 less than the amount levied and budgeted for. General sales and use tax collection was $1.7 which exceeded our budgeted amount by $115,000. All property taxes and two-thirds of the general sales and service and use tax are deposited into the general fund and provide the funding for all the primary functions of our city government. I listed off some highlights earlier. There are 25 departments in our general fund, which are funded by these sources. In 2019, the total general fund revenue was projected at 2.7 million and 3 million was collected. That was about 250,000 over projection. Prior year general property taxes general sales and service and use tax, penalties and interest on delinquent taxes, federal and state grants, motor vehicle licenses, and local government highway and bridge funds, recreation program fees, airport fuel sales, interest, airport lease pay revenue, library copies, and some of our liquor percentages and the sale of some municipal property all exceeded revenue production. Current year, general property taxes, airport hangar rental, and Mueller Center building rentals, and some liquor percentages were some of the areas where our revenue projections fell short. We received the following grants this year, $10,850 for the police department to purchase five new radios, $2,000 for the library from Dollar General, $1,000 for the library from the Stephanie Miller Davis Charitable Fund, $650 for the library from the Jump Start Night Program, $1,000 for the library from the South Dakota Department of Agriculture for tree planting, 
2019 expenditures in the general fund totaled 2.8 million against an originally projected budget amount of 2.7 and a final adjusted amount of 2.9. The police department for one, I'm sorry, for $16,000 and snow removal for $6,200, both exceeded their budget authorities in 2019. The remaining departments operated within budget authority. A number of additional appropriations were made during 2019 to cover unexpected and unbudgeted items. These included uh, an email spam filter, firewall upgrades, software server upgrades, a wage study with the Weston Group, the codification of our city ordinances with American Legal Publishing, various unplanned vehicle repairs in the maintenance department, the replacement of a dump truck, some software that helps our police department. It's called the Zerker software. You'll remember talking about that. Airport fuel inventory and the airport fueling system purchase, including that of the courtesy car. The library system, heating system repairs, increased snow removal expenses, concrete improvements at 23rd Street, South Chicago and North River, sign repairs at Evergreen Cemetery, Evergreen Weed Control Services and cat boarding and disposition fees. This fund had a gain of $184,000 in 2019. The city also receives an additional 1% of the sales tax charged on the gross receipts of all sales related to lodging, alcoholic beverages, prepared food, and admissions. This is our 211 fund called, used to be called BB&B, also called Liquor Lodging and Dining, now called Gross Receipts Tax. In 2019, 152,000 was collected and it had 148,000 spent. 80% of the collected tax is remitted directly by the City of Hot Springs to the Chamber of Commerce to provide support and promote the city. The, and as you heard from a wonderful update from Olivia, that's money well spent. The remaining 20% is used to pay for the utilities and some of the building repairs at both the Mueller Center and the depot. This fund does struggle to maintain adequate reserves or income to cover the ongoing expenses of and repairs needed at both of these locations. If the purpose of this fund is to continue providing the support needed for the buildings, future adjustments may be needed. Both buildings have needed repairs and regular maintenance required for their upkeep. Utility costs are also rising. This fund did have a gain of $4,000 in 2019. The remaining one third of the above mentioned general sales service and use tax is deposited into our 212 additional sales tax fund. It was established by ordinance and it is used for debt service, street improvements, street maintenance equipment, building construction, building upkeep repairs, debt service and any other expense deemed necessary and approved by the council. Revenue received in the fund for 2019 was 867,000 expenses were 570. Once again, in 2020, this fund is budgeted to utilize tax reserves of 466,000 to help cover a portion of the Jennings Bridge replacement project. In 2019, this fund received $97,000 from the state DOT to assist with the expenses of the project. This fund earned interest of $11,400 from the investment of funds set aside for the 2021 U.S. Highway 18385 road reconstruction project and collected $235,000 related to the back nine and Boulder Falls street assessments. This fund had a gain of almost $300,000 in 2019. The bid fund 213 fully funded by a $2 per unit per night fee collected from transient guests of lodging establishments located within the boundaries of the city. Their primary focus is to promote market and better, <coughs> excuse me, the city of Hot Springs. In 2019, the city struggled with board participation and meetings. Luckily, the board works closely with our Hot Springs Chamber of Commerce staff who have been instrumental in making sure that all the marketing and advertising decisions continue to be made. New members have been appointed, the board is back on track and ready for the new year. The majority of the expenses in this fund are related to marketing and advertising. 
In 2019, almost $40,000 was spent with Lawrence and Schiller in advertising to promote our city. The best part about that is these funds are matched dollar for dollar by the State Department of Tourism. The bid fund pays $10,000 annually towards the social media coordinator position. Our city 212 fund does this as well. In 2019, the city received 87,000 in revenues for this fund. It was unfortunately the lowest amount collected since inception in 2014, but they kept their expenditures in check and had a gain of 14,000. The 501 fund is our capital improvement fund that was established in November of 2013 by ordinance. The fund, the purpose of the fund is described to be used for financial resources related to special projects throughout the community. In 2019, the fund received $2,200. This amount was the direct result of the transfer of general fund dollars from the recreation budget that accounts for the baseball instructors and assistants earned and unpaid wages, which are specifically set aside for baseball improvements. The fund didn't expend any dollars in 2019, so it had a gain of the exact amount. The last governmental fund for the city that you'll see on your annual report is the 701 Cemetery Perpetual Care Fund. This fund was established to account for payments received for the perpetual care of our beautiful cemetery. One half of the payment collected for the sale of lots in the cemetery is placed in this fund and a minimum of $55,000 $50,000 is required per lot. Amounts in excess of this amount can be spent on care and improvements of our cemetery. In 2019, revenues were 3,700. This was 2,500 for the sale of lots and another 1,200 in interest. The only expense of this fund was the $1,200 transfer to the general fund to cover the cost of refurbishing the sign at the cemetery. It had a gain of $2,500. So after the breakdown of the governmental funds by revenue and expenditures, showing any transfers in and out or any the increase or decrease in the fund balance, and then the ending balance in each of our funds, we move on to our proprietary or enterprise funds. These funds are accounted for and reported in a manner similar to private businesses. We have our water fund, 602. It took in $900,000 in revenue and had $950,000 in expenses. Highlights of the revenues included the metered and flat water charges, both bulk water sales from the water fill station and Fall River Water Users District purchase of water from the city. We also generated in this fund $11,800 in earned interest. Total expenses have capitalized asset purchases removed and 213,000 of depreciation. Some of the major capital projects completed this year included the 26th Street Water Distribution Improvement Project, a shared portion of a Bobcat loader with a broom, a shared portion of a John Deere mini excavator. In 2019, the city was notified that we had been awarded a CDBG grant in the amount of $565,000, the funds have not yet been received, to assist with the water and sewer infrastructure improvement project. Effective in 2019, fixed and variable water usage rates increased after a water study we did, water rate study. The ordinance also included a 1.9% increase each year for the next four years. With the new higher rate, the city became eligible to apply for South Dakota DENR, SRF, and USDA RD grant dollars. This fund had a loss of $44,000 in 2019. The wastewater fund took in $800,000 in revenue and had $656,000 in expenses. Highlights of revenue include sewer charges and interest earned. The total expenses do have capitalized asset purchases removed and $182,000 of depreciation included. Some of the major capital projects completed this year include the other half of that Bobcat loader with the broom, the Houston Avenue sewer project. Uh, wastewater rates also increased sewer charges in 2019 with an increase each year for the next four years and is also included in the CDBG grant award for the infrastructure improvements that will occur in conjunction with the road reconstruction. 
In late 2019, an emergency repair was authorized for the wet well at the wastewater treatment plant. Expenses to repair the wet well are currently projected at 335,000. After posting depreciation and the pension expense, this fund exceeded its annual budget authority by $15,758. This fund had a gain of 162,000. The solid waste fund receives and pays out 100% of the money collected for garbage service, including <coughs> optional residential recycling provided to utility customers through a contract with Fall River Sanitation. This contract began in 2016 and terminates at the end of 2021. It has an option to renew for a period up to an additional three years with mutual consent. This fund also receives the $2.25 city fee charged to utility customers. These additional funds are used to dispose of city trash along roadways and parks throughout the year, maintain the brush piles at the maintenance shop, which we talked a lot about in 2019. <coughs> Um, and to dispose of the refuge that's accumulated by the city during the free cleanup event, typically held twice per year. Revenues collected for the year total 202,000, expenses total 256,000. In 2019, you'll remember this fund paid out $80,000 to reclamation services for the chipping of the brush piles at the city maintenance facility. A grant in the amount of $17,500 was awarded to the city from the state of South Dakota Solid Waste Management Program to help cover the cost of the shipping. We attempted but were unable to secure a buyer during the 2019 city surplus auction to purchase the chips, but are still looking forward to useful ways to use them. This fund had a loss of $53,000 in 2019. The Southern Hills Golf Course consists of two separate departments. That's the golf course and the clubhouse. Expenses are accounted for in each department, but they both share in the revenue collected to fund the operations. The golf course became an enterprise fund in 2014. Revenues collected do not support expenses incurred, so each year the fund receives subsidies transferred from our 212 fund to support operations. The amount of the subsidy this year was $85,000. Revenue at the golf course is also impacted by a significant transfer in related to the expense of utility services, mainly water usage at the course. All city locations are charged and then refunded the cost of water and wastewater services. Excluding the transfer in, the golf course collected almost $400,000 in revenues. After the transfers, the amount of revenue is 534,000. Expenses totaled almost $600,000. Total expenses include the removal of capital asset purchases in the year and a depreciation of the expense of 109,000. In 2019, the golf course purchased a half share of a John Deere mini excavator. After posting depreciation and the pension expense, this fund exceeded its annual budget authority by $96,000. Despite the transfer in, this fund had a loss of $65,000 in 2019. Evans Plunge Mineral Springs Fund 621 also had insufficient revenue to support expenditures. Therefore, this fund also received a subsidy from the 212 fund to support its operations. In 2019, the subsidy was $50,000. The revenue and expenses are both impacted by the transfers related to the city provided utility services. Excluding the transfers in, the plunge collected revenue of almost $700,000. Adding in both transfers, total revenue is $762,000. Expenses total $721,000. Total expenses have capitalized asset purchases removed and $47,400 of depreciation excluded. They had no capital asset additions in 2019, but did complete a number of improvement projects, including the installation of low energy push button remotes to provide ADA front door access a new 36 inch hollow metal door, one sliding window, a bed panel window for the tower. They were able to purchase a new Vision Fitness X70 Ascent elliptical trainer for $4,400, thanks in part to a $1,950 donation from the DeWinia family. The debt related to the purchase of the building was paid down by $85,000 and interest expense of 62,000 was incurred. The remaining principal balance on the debt related to the purchase is $1.4 million. 
this fund had a gain of $31,500. In 2019, we added no new debt. The city did make the following annual debt related payments. Uh, year one at the street cleaning street sweeper of a five year lease, the, the payment was $34,000. Uh, after five years, we had the option to buy out at $70,000. The additional sales tax fund had payments for the Boulder Falls subdivision road paving. We have two debt issuances related to that a 10 year special assessment bond issue, we're in year two, annual payments of $150,000 and a 15 year sales tax revenue bond were in the second year of that annual payments of 33,500. The water fund pays a 20 year loan. It was an SRF drinking water number one revenue bond. We're in year seven of that 20 year note. Annual payments are $109,000. The wastewater fund also has a 20 year SRF clean water number two bond issue. We're in year seven of that and our annual payments are 82,000. Southern Hills Golf Course has a five year lease to own on 40 golf carts. We're in year two of annual payments of 25,000 on that. And Evans Punch has a 20 year sales tax revenue bond uh, with payments of 147,000. In 2019, we made the final payment of $63,400 on the special assessment note payable to Bank of the West for the back nine street improvement which was paid for from the additional sales tax fund. In 2020, effective for 2021, we plan to refund and reissue the Evans Punch Mineral Spring sales tax bonds in order to take advantage of lower bond coupon rates and reduce the amount of interest paid and the term of the debt. I recommend no other new debt be added at this time. We've met many challenges in 2019. We have many, many more to face in 2020. We must continue to look for ways to grow our tax base and continue to support growth in our community. Our primary focus should remain with the operations, management, and responsibilities already bestowed upon us in our city. Any attempt to grow these operations or responsibilities require an equal growth in the ability to continuously fund them. We need to increase our focus and efforts around seeking out and applying for grant funding opportunities. Those help allow us to continue with improvements to our equipment, facilities, and community without putting a significant burden on our department budgets and our taxpayers. We need to be frugal, but we also need to pay special attention to our existing equipment and infrastructure needs. A number of emergencies popped up in 2019. Most definitely some were the result of years of deferred maintenance and neglect. As we plan for the 2021 budget in the coming months, the finance office will be asking all departments to identify and plan on budgeting for these deferred maintenance projects. The city is still committed to being financially prepared to face the upcoming challenges and expenses related to our 2021 road reconstruction project. We did not specifically set aside any additional funds to help pay for those expenses in 2019 or 2020 but we were able to build additional reserves in both the general fund and the additional sales tax fund. Moving forward, I recommend a renewed focus and commitment to collecting all revenue due to the city and ensuring each and every purchase made on behalf of the city is needed, necessary, and follows the guidelines established in our city procurement policy. As stated in that policy, each dollar spent should be for a legitimate public purpose and should be done obtaining the best value possible. This ongoing responsibility cannot be overstated. These are just some of the highlights of the many, many things that went on in 2019. If I've left something out that should be mentioned or noted, please be sure to let me know. I do encourage each of you to review the annual report and the complete audit reports when they are available in detail. If you're looking for more information regarding any related topic, please don't hesitate to ask. I did decide to include just a few more items with your annual report this year because uh, I do think knowledge is power. Um, I found a nice profit loss summary by fund. You're used to seeing these in your monthly finance reports. This just sums it up for the whole year and goes over those gain or loss figures by fund that I just reviewed. Um, the fund summary report, which is the budget versus actual, again, you're used to seeing these in your monthly finance report, so this just summarizes it for the whole year by fund. 
I did include a balance sheet this year. For those of you that are a little more accounting savvy, this has information regarding all of the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity within the city of Hot Springs. There's a lot of numbers on here and a lot of information on here, but I thought it was important to show it to you. And for those of you that are interested in talking more about it, I encourage you to ask any questions that you have after reviewing it. <coughs> the last thing I included, which I really would like um, each of you to take an opportunity to review, is the Department of Legislative Audit Checklist of Statutory Controls. This includes laws, not city ordinance, but state laws that we must follow in our functions uh, as a city council in operating with public funds throughout the year. I need to be able to answer yes to the majority of these questions for us to have a satisfactory finding on our audit. Um, this includes things about claims, uh, things about uh, when things are allowed and presented in front of the governing body and contracts are approved by the governing body. If we meet the requirements of laws for uh, posting in the official newspaper things like salary changes um, and bond issues and any opening or closing of accounts. So uh, sometimes when it feels like we're being a little particular about things, I thought that reading through this checklist of statutory controls would provide some additional information why those things are important. Um, I thank you for your time and I respectfully submit the annual report to you at this time. Okay, thank you, Misty. John, yeah, city administrator, please. Mayor, I, I, yes, I do have a question for Misty on her report. Okay, go ahead. Uh, on page three of the checklist of statutory controls, item number 17, uh, did officials retrain, refrain from spending in excess? Um, there isn't anything checked there. Because I'm not sure I can check yet. Okay. So, um, the, and just to clarify, there's a few um, that have to do with this, and it's refraining from spending in excess of the amount appropriated for any purpose or any department for each year, except if otherwise specifically provided for in statute. And when I reviewed, re reviewed the annual report with you, you would have noticed that I did mention a couple funds and departments that exceeded budget authority. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Council, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, my work is focused primarily on the suspended sidewalk project and our joint power agreement with the DOT. The first one that you approved tonight is the transfer of the Highway 18 segment. That required a lot of effort to define exactly what we were accepting and what we were not accepting based on uh, plans from the original construction because the existing station number system had not been created and we were dealing with old station numbering systems. We had many unique small parcels that were associated with this transfer agreement. Uh, those little colored pages in, in your file, in your packet, they go along with the transfer agreement. Those pieces of property we were maintaining anyway, but they will also now become our responsibility. And please, if the bridge is ever needs work again, the DOT should come back in and rent those from us uh, so they can rebuild that bridge if necessary. Uh, I want to mention that the, from the traffic light 16th Street was built in 1982. That is 38 years old in that segment. Part two was 16th Street for the bypass. It was built in 1995. It's 25 years in age. We currently have the repairs scheduled to happen on University. That's TCN 05YE, and that was let in 2018. And it replaces the panels that we see that are damaged, and it's a joint ceiling project from the traffic light to the bypass. I presented life cycle costs that were realistic based on my experience, and also of Tracy Bastion. Uh, we projected those over 25 year life cycle costs. We still have the Joint Powers Agreement 2, which is concerning highway construction. This document will need to be reviewed more thoroughly with council, with the committees, to make sure that the language is appropriate with our not to exceed consideration. Uh, 
we should not expect the DOT to, to hear the words not to exceed in their contract, but there will be language hopefully that everyone can live with that will support a not to exceed consideration. Work with mobile food vendors, real short and quick. Uh, Bob went over that pretty well. Currently, we can hope to get four mobile food vendors in that location. Right now, we are not looking at other locations uh, at this time, but we welcome you know, outside mobile food vendors that have shown an interest in this location. And I especially want our displaced business owners to get with us and, and try to put something in also. That would be a great asset for our community. Our streets and maintenance department has been exceptionally busy with repairing some of our city streets. We've had four areas that have been identified as sinkholes. They are utility related settlements, uh, mostly from, from underground water moving around. We've had a very wet two years. We had two repairs on 22nd and Albany, one repair on 6th and Lincoln. And we finally repaired the spot at the entrance to the golf course, I believe we have got that fixed there. Many alleys had pothole fixes, and mowing seasons has also begun. <coughs> uh, widening of Garden Street is in progress and will continue to be in progress uh, as we widen that street and fill in the old irrigation ditch. We spent a good bit of time this past couple of weeks on the Hot Springs Public Library. We expanded the public service hours. Curbside is now available 12 to 6 Monday through Friday, extended to two on Saturdays. They do have a public computer for use by appointment only. We encourage the public to, to benefit from that computer. If you have something you need internet access for, please schedule an appointment. Uh, we have streamlined the process of the library operations and at the same time they are also preparing for a summer read program following COVID-19 restrictions letting us so Jenny's bridge replacement the low bidder was Beechler construction with the current documentation which we'll be looking at at your next council meeting Beechler has indicated that they would like to begin work in mid-July I have suggested to Bros, and it's open for discussion of a different date for startup. I had suggested September. We will need to discuss that at the next council meeting and have that in the meeting minutes because we want them to consider a different start date. Uh, lastly, Spring Clean Hot Springs. Scott Soki is the point of contact. It's supposed to begin officially May 15th been delayed due to the COVID-19 restrictions. It is expected to run through June 15th. Uh, he has planted a dumpster that will be placed at the maintenance shop. So people that are cleaning their properties and the place to dispose of their things will have access to. Uh, this project will also coincide with our free dumping. I ask our citizens to please help your community, your neighbors, or those needing Needing assistance, uh, outstretched hand. A lot of people have been affected by the COVID 19 challenges. Getting together, social distancing, and getting outside to clean up yards is a good benefit and good exercise. Uh, as the governor would say, South Dakota is strong. We will get through this together. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. As far as uh, my report, I just want to remind everyone uh, another COVID-19 case uh, this weekend in Fall River County. Uh, done some checking. It has been travel related. Uh, hopefully uh, will remain that there will be no community spread. But uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from the Department of Health. Uh, call them today and I know they're inundated uh, following other cases in in, uh, in other communities but uh, I just want to encourage the public to continue to maintain social distancing avoid unnecessary travel if you don't have to go to uh, another location please uh, please stay home 
uh, use good hygiene practices. If you feel sick, stay home, call your uh, health care provider, and uh, if you do have uh, symptoms uh, of uh, COVID-19, please uh, get checked. We know that uh, it's going to impact the economy. Our first financial sales tax report wasn't that bad, but uh, it was only the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, was reflected only in a partial portion of that month. So we anticipate the loss of revenue and that's, uh, that's not good. But uh, the good thing is, as you heard from Misty's annual report, we're going into the uh, year with a, a, in a good, strong financial position as a city. And that's uh, very important because we've got some lean years <coughs> coming ahead. One of the uh, things that also is encouraging, uh, just got provided the housing stats for the first uh, uh, four months of this year. Uh, we're up uh, already to $1.15 million in, in uh, housing starts and that's, six, uh, that's $761,000 ahead of last year with the director year. So hopefully that can keep up uh, because that builds our tax base. And as Misty articulately pointed out, that's what we want to do is look for ways that we can uh, we can build that tax base. One of the things that uh, you approved tonight also gives us an opportunity to do that, not in the immediate future, but certainly as it's, it's finished, is uh, sprucing up our downtown. And uh, I do appreciate the... Uh, uh, the approval of that, I think that's going to be a, a something that will benefit uh, our community for a number of years and draw many, many people here to enjoy hot spring. With that said, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Then moved and second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Meetings adjourned. Thank you.